Welcome to Adventures in Education, a program that spotlights positive things happening in the world of education in Southern Oregon and Northern California. I'm your host, John Letts. And speaking of positive things, I can hardly think of something more positive than the focus we have today on a program called Salmon Watch, a great program for people in our area, particularly students in school, to connect with such an important part of our natural world. And here to help explain that is Greg Stayback. And Greg, thank you for coming on, uh, accepting our invitation on Adventures in Education today. Oh, well, I'm happy to be here, John, talking about one of my favorite programs that we've worked on the last couple of years. Yeah, and uh, we have. We often see each other out there, sometimes in, in hip boots, being out there in the river. Uh, so uh, let's start with just having you explain what Salmon Watch is and some of the things people should know about this okay. program. Well, the Salmon Watch program initially was started in around 1993 by Oregon Trout, and the program was designed to teach local students about stewardship, really looking at it from the salmon's perspective. So everything was focused on salmon life cycle, salmon returning to the rivers and streams, looking at water quality quality, macroinvertebrates, and it kind of evolved from there. It went from Oregon Trout to the Freshwater Trust, and then unfortunately it ran locally for probably about 10 years in the in Jackson and Josephine County, and then funding was cut, so it languished a couple years. But we were involved prior to that, as were a number of partners, the Bear Creek Larsh Education Partners, which you were involved in, actually so was I, and we decided to bring it back, so we were lucky enough to get some outside grant funding. First it was the Carpenter Foundation, and then it was the Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, and now it's the Gray Family Foundation, and they've been great in terms of allowing us to expand the program. There are a lot of different elements to it, and we kind of distilled it down to its core, which is a field trip focused on largely third to eighth graders, but we've worked occasionally with high school students where we basically arrange for a field trip so the students come down to the Rogue River, Bear Creek, or another water body. And again, they go through four educational stations, they do hands-on activities, and they learn and apply real science, scientific investigation, and they learn about salmon biology, they learn about riparian areas, water quality, macroinvertebrates, and how the four stations are all tied together. So no matter where they start, they end up going through all four stations in the day. And I, I've had the experience of being the teacher and bringing the kids out, you know, to that program as well as helping with other uh, groups of students from other schools. And I can tell you the, the way that the, that the kids connect with what's going on, uh, a lot of them, you know, they live here, but they don't really know about all this activity going on with the salmon and the importance of all that. Uh, but they sure know it by the time they've had uh, experience with Salmon Watch. Yeah, they do, and again, it's, it's based on that hands-on activity, you know, the experiencing through, experience learning through doing. So, I mean, it's really a great program. We also try to tie in, there is a little bit of in-school you know, classroom instruction for selected classes. There's a teacher curriculum that goes along with that. And we do a lot of evaluation of the program in terms of, you know, give them questions to answer before they go through the program and after. So after, again, they learn about, you know, they may have never seen a macroinverter, be able to know that there are, you know, bugs in the stream yeah. and then what they are and why are they important. You know, what it tells us about water quality, you know, how they're food for fish. Um, you know, the salmon biology, I mean, most people are, you know, a lot of people fish, you know, so they're aware that there are salmon in local streams, and particularly for residents in the Medford area, Bear Creek actually has very healthy salmon runs, all things considered, not mm -hmm. as good as the Rogue River, but we have the coho salmon, the Chinook salmon, and then the steelhead also come back, although they're really anadromous trout. So, yeah, I mean, there's a right. lot of, you know, but there's just, that seems to blow people's minds. And then just looking at how they live, what's important for them in terms of water quality, you know, shade from trees, again, healthy bugs, and then just, you know, other factors as well. And then also how they're so tied into the ecosystem, how, you know, there's recreation, there's, you know, fishing, there's wildlife, there's just everything's connected. So really teaching kids about watershed stewardship. And I was excited to hear moving into the 
Josephine County area because I, I'm a resident of Josephine County now. And uh, I was uh, fortunate to be able to come out on a field trip for a fifth grade class. Uh, and we have a video of that. Oh, great. So uh, you make a cameo appearance in that. All right, I was so, an instructor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let, let's go ahead and see that first video of uh, what happened uh, with that group of kids. Okay, great. Nothing defines Jackson and Josephine counties better than the Rogue River. A program called Salmon Watch helps kids learn about this defining feature. In October of 2018, fifth grade students joined Salmon Watch presenters and volunteers at Reinhardt Park in Grants Pass to learn about the Rogue River and what lives in and around it. They started with water quality testing. So we're going to find out the temperature of the water and temperature of the air. So we have a number of different thermometers. So some are in Fahrenheit, some are in Celsius. What we're going to do when we get started is we're going to send a few of you upstream, a few of you downstream, and you're going to take the thermometers in pairs and measure uh, again, air temperature and water temperature. Why I have the thermometer in pairs is one's for water, one's for air, because once they get wet, it's hard to measure air temperature. So you think salmon are, are warm or cold water species? Cold. Cold. Cold, cold. cold water. So they definitely do like cold water. Yeah, it's just barely yeah, above good. 10. Essentially, really cold. Cool. Yeah. So do you think I should take it out now? Problem. What are you at? Uh, don't touch the bottom. That's where it gets its temperature. It's ten. It's a ten. Yeah. Well, how many how many degrees did you get? Well, in Fahrenheit, I got all into the water. So Fahr Fahrenheit, we got yeah. fifty. Did anybody else get a measurement in Fahrenheit? He got fifty. Fifty. Okay. And let's. Uh, what about air air temperature in Fahrenheit? Ten degrees. Fair. So, so we have 50, 50 degrees Fahrenheit for, this is water temperature, right? 10 degrees for water temperature in Celsius. What else do we get for water temperature in Celsius? I know I heard, I heard something other, somebody said something other than 10 degrees Celsius. Nine. Nine, so we have nine degrees Celsius, nine and 10 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So water temperature is cool, cool enough, 64 degrees, 18 degrees Celsius are the benchmarks we're looking for, so that's good. What about air temperature? Yes. Um, 10 degrees Celsius, or 9. Sure. 10 or 9. So that was for air and water, so the air temperature and water temperature are the same right now? So this one, to the very first line. The, the both is it this line, Mrs. Go? The first yeah. line, yeah. Okay. For both of their color differences are Okay, that's probably... Yeah. It's changing colors. Oh, you gotta shake it. That's why you have a lid. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's your regular. And then you're gonna use this wheel right here to tell and find the color match, okay? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh. pH, what do we get for pH? Oh, no, we got... 2.48 and 8.48. So, 2.48 is probably conductivity. The 8.48 is about 8.5 for pH. What else? Somebody, what about the color wheel? We had a we could do the color wheel. You got 9 something? Okay, that's good. Well, anybody else? So we had two people do pHs. I know... We, what about the U.S.? 7.0? You can just put that in the box. Okay, so we have pH is somewhere between 7 and 9. Stop. Color chain, so now it looks like apple cider. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Oh, it's starting to change. Is it starting to change? I can't see. I can't see. Five. No, that's six. That's no, that's five. five. Six. That one even go in? I like this one. 
See how it's getting lighter? No. No. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's turning clear. Clear. Whoa. Nine. I can't see. It's quick. It's actually turning clear. I'm fascinated. Ten. Just add the whole thing in. <laughs> what? Whoa. What? Is it completely clear? Do we still see yellow? I still see a little bit yellow. yellow. Okay. One more drop. Eleven. I can't no. see it. <laughs> Got a slight yellowish tint to it. Okay. Still yellow. Still yellow. Drink it. No, I know. Still well, that's it. Sit in this no time. There, there it is. No, no there it is. clear. Whoa! Science! That's science! Science! Oxygen in the water. Fish like it anywhere around 10 or above, so this is really healthy. Cold water holds more oxygen than warm water. So later in the day, if it warms up, we might see the oxygen levels going a little bit down. Let's see that chemical change that occurs as a solution is added a drop at a time. This is the last of multiple steps taken with the sample from the river water. So what questions do you have about chemistry, what you learned? So first of all, is the water good for fish? Yes. yes. All right. oh, so they're like us, like that. And you look inside. Now this is a oh. female. Normally, when you would when you would open it up, the, the, the eggs, the roe, which are called roe. Are those three thousand? So the baby. Yeah, they have. Like, they lay up to three thousand eggs. The bigger ones can. Yeah. And of those, remember I said only ten. Ten fish might make it back like this. This is what they use to, for buoyancy, because you know how they don't. So they don't float up to the top or sink I to the bottom. They they fill this up with air and it kind of helps them stay yeah, where they want to be in the. It looks like you got cut right there. Can I go? Can I touch yep. it? <gasps> Can I touch so, it? Here, that's sharp. <laughs> that's sharp. Right here? The bones are yes. The bones are sharp. And right here is the heart, which is something we have too. We may not have an air bladder, but we do have a heart. I touched the heart. I and you see how? And you see how the heart is really close to the gills? That's because it pumps the blood over the gills. That's how they. they no. Right there. Right there. What is that? Guard rod. Right there. Guard rod. Yeah, that's the heart. I want to hold one of those. And this is the liver. Liver. Liver, uh, liver which I want to touch we all have a liver too, and it does the same sort of thing for the fish. It, that it uh, does holds for, their pee, right? Oh, well, it helps filter yeah, toxins from their blood. Yeah. Oh, right. Ew! Don't say there's no pee. And they, ha they have a, they have a, a skeleton, like we do, like these are their little ribs, Ew. and they have a spine and a backbone. Of course, their backbone Ew. is more central, and you can see it here. But, so they're vertebrates, which right. we are too. They also have, this is their, their stomach, and then this goes through, this is the large intestine, and it goes through and then goes to the vent, so they, act, where they poop, basically. Wait, so if you wrapped a needle and you, if you poked that, would it pop? It would. It would, but then I wouldn't be able to show the next class how it's all full of air. Salt to fresh water, because that's how they regulate their salt, because too much salt is bad for them, and not enough salt. It, so, so that's how, you can. Can I, can I, yeah. Oh. Uh, do I want one? Inside it's watery. Can I touch that? Sure. Do, do, do. Oh. oh. The, and you see it's really muscular because that's how that's their wow. that's their motor. That's how they go. Welcome back to Adventures in Education. Uh, Greg Stayback is my guest with Salmon Watching. Boy, you really see there what we mean by hands-on. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's great to expose kids to, you know, again, the hands-on learning, chemistry. I mean, I can't, since I didn't hear the audio on that clip, I didn't know. One of the things I like to say is, do you remember when they say you'll never use your chemistry for anything? I was like, well, I do this almost on a daily, <laughs> if not weekly basis. So kids really see. So learn that table. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing is nice to see in the video is, you know, the professionals in the field, like for our instructors, we rely on, in that case, the um, woman doing the dissection work for the Bureau of Land Management. I work for the Rogue Valley Council of Governments. We have a lot of partners we rely on, so the kids also see professionals in the field, could see that maybe someday I could build this into a career. Um, we have great 
um, volunteers, uh, Rogue Valley Sewer Services, we have local cities help us out, Central Point, Rogue River, um, Freshwater Trust, Rogue River Keeper. Um, there's just, so it's built on partners. And then also for the instructor piece, we also rely on local students. So we basically recruit heavily from Southern Oregon University and get uh, environmental education students to um, essentially they can be contracted instructors so give them some exposure some experience essentially give them a little stipend and then we also rely on former teachers we have a lot of <laughs> <That's> uh, <me. laughs> we have a lot of former um, we have a couple of excellent teachers who are also again involved in the bear creek larsha education partner so again without our volunteers and our teachers we couldn't really do that and then we have a lot of partner organizations that just pitch in whether it's transportation or Oregon State Parks has been great in waiving fees for use like Valley of the Rogue, um, BLM lets us use McGregor Park, um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife they provide all the fish you see for the dissection um, and also some instructors as well so again it really takes a village Medford Water Commission um, Brogue River Watershed Council, Siskiyou Field Institute. So it's just a huge um, collaboration of partners. And with the Gray Family Foundation, you had mentioned before the video that finally getting into more Josephine County, we were a little limited with the Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District sure. since their constituents were Jackson County. But now with Gray, we're looking at really making the program you know, basin wide. So we're, we had several classes in Josephine County and we hope in fall of 2019 to maybe um, expand more into the Applegate, the Illinois Valley, and then also Lower Rogue as well, and just partner so we look at the program in a Rogue Basin, so all three counties. And that's, that's all kind of come under one umbrella now where we used to have kind of different parts of the river councils and now it's kind of come together as the Rogue Council. Um, there's some other parts of uh, stream testing, and one has to do with uh, the macroinvertebrates. Okay. Let's see the kids involved in that activity during this field trip. Okay, perfect. So here's the, here's the kids in the river doing the great stuff. The Rogue River runs like a ribbon of life through southwest Oregon. Water is life, it's true. But what lives in this water? And what do living things tell us about the health of this river? Those questions can only be answered by getting close to the river, close enough to look below the surface. Those questions can be answered by macroinvertebrate collection. That's a way to look below the surface and see what's living there. A program called Salmon Watch brings fifth graders from Parkside Elementary right to the river to find out. Volunteer Dick Barber prepares students for the collection. Some of the critters we find are going to tell us of the water quality. Some, if we find certain critters, they only live in clean water. And then there are other critters, other macroinvertebrates, they are really tolerant of pollution. Things like, um, like aquatic worms. And you guys know what leeches are? Yes. Leeches are really, uh, they, don't, they don't apparently care if it's really polluted water. But there are others, other macroinvertebrates, and we're going to see if we're going to find them. They signify, they tell us if the water is clean because they don't live in polluted water. Students have already learned some important things about salmon. And the reason it's good to put lobster is because when, when the salmon, er, when the baby salmon's hatch, then they need a place to hide, and then once they grow up, they would go out and then once they uh, and, and then once they need to lay the eggs and they go into the lab to lay the eggs and then then what happens is more than the same. Well you're almost hundred percent correct. The only the only thing different is they don't uh, salmon do not lay their eggs in logs. What they do is they find gravel like this and you know gravel that, that has a lot of cold oxygenated water flowing over it and they dig a hole called a red, that's R-E-D-D, -D, that's going to be on the test. 
Um, and they, with their with their tail fins, their collar fins, they dig out a hole, and then they swim down there, dump their eggs. The, the females do, oh. and then the males go down there as well. They, they, there's like a female; she dumps her her eggs, and then the male is down there side by side, and he releases a, a it's a, a substance called milt, M I L T milt, and then that swirls around the eggs. And boom, you got light. After a few questions about salmon, Barbara demonstrates how to collect the macroinvertebrates hiding below the surface. Okay, so right in here, and you plop it down, and then uh, you, you and your partner hang on to the hang on to the stick, and then you do what's known as the salmon shuffle or the macroinvertebrate shuffle. And so what you do, you do a little dance. About per minute, you know, and notice how I'm swirling up, you know, I'm swirling up gravel and stuff from the bottom. And what's happening is the water's flowing this way, and it catches when I'm stirring up, okay? And then, and in that, really what I'm doing is hopefully I'm catching macroinvertebrates. I'm kind of waking them up from their home, which is down at the bottom. Then I take, I take my net. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes I catch fish. And then you go in one of these tubs. There's a tub here and a tub over there. And, and then I take you're gonna take the net if that if that's if you're one with a net, and you turn it inside out, and then you rinse it off. And what you're doing is you're rinsing off the macroinvertebrates that you caught out there. Once the kids got their boots on, they got into the river and started doing the macroinvertebrate dance, disturbing the river bottom to send macroinvertebrates into their nets. I got one. Good job. Micah, can I use your net when you're done? Yeah. Thank you. Alright, no worries. No? I know, but then you're free. Yes, I found one. No, wet. Okay, here, guys. You want me to play? You guys, you want? There's one. There's one. In that spot. It, it, it's not really moving, but it's. Chloe! Chloe, I need your help again. Chloe's waking up. There he is. Yay! Yay! Way to go, Chloe. I found something that has water in it. I think she did it. I did it. Hey, there's something in there, too. Yeah. He's just being nice and quiet. You want to bring it over there? So with all due respect to books, there's nothing like what you're seeing there, you know, with the kids actually out working in the river collecting macroinvertebrates. And then uh, what you didn't see in the video is the macroinvertebrates that you find uh, help tell you about the health of the creek. So I'm here with, uh, with uh, Greg Stayback, and uh, we're talking about Salmon Watch, which is the program that those kids were involved in. Greg, you have some things to show in the, some of the kits that are available to teachers and some of the ones we were using out on the the yeah, river. Correct. I, I just have uh, some what's in the water quality kit. So as I mentioned, you saw some of it in use in the video. Um, again, we emphasize safety for the kids because we deal with some dangerous chemicals. So you see people wearing gloves and also eye protection in the video. We do practice real science. So we have, a, uh, they record all the data. So looking at water temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, turbidity, salinity, and we have various tests and equipment how to do them so well, one thing we like to do is you know have kids do different spots air water temperature deal with fahrenheit and celsius so talk about just some differences in temperatures you know again ties in a riparian area shade we have a couple different ways to measure ph we have um i call that one the newfangled uh, one I, right 
So just digital meters, and then we also use a color wheel. So it, so it just, you basically add some chemicals, use the wheel to match it up, whatever color it changes. So the kids seem to like that. And then we also have, you saw in the video, our dissolved oxygen test, which is more involved. And this is actually a distilled version of what we do in the lab. We actually do this test a little bit higher tech, but it's using the exact same chemicals, the exact same process, which is called a titration. And we have instructions, so depending on the age of the kids, um, you know, we walk them through how to do it, or we have them do it themselves. And you saw the reaction of the kid <laughs> when this, when the sample turned from from about grape juice, uh, not grape juice, the uh, apple juice color to clear. You saw the expression on his face, seeing you know how all this works. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I remember uh, the importance of being able to use these. And Greg, I want to thank you so much for coming out and letting our people know about Salmon Watch. No, oh, my pleasure. And um, you know, your your teacher, or if you hear their classes going to Salmon Watch, you know they're going to a really good thing. Thank you for watching uh, um, Adventures in Education. We'll be back with another show later. I'm John Letts.